Hello friends, welcome to Garden with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we are going to do a very special fun project that we have been excited about since gosh I guess about September. We are in the back of our house and behind the patio I will give you a little bit of perspective of where we are in just a minute. Um, but you can, I think maybe in the shot, you can see where the tractor is and then the cryptomerias. That's in front of those cryptomerias is where we did the phantom hydrangeas. But what we are going to do today, I don't know if y'all can hear that, but there are sirens going off everywhere. So just ignore that if you can hear it. It's just slightly distracting. Um, we are going to create the dahlia flower bed. Back in September, Jerry and I flew all the way across the country to go visit Laura and Aaron, of course, of Garden Answer. We were helping them convert their cold frame into a greenhouse. And while we were there, oh, I got to experience Laura's dahlias up close and personal. And they, I just fell madly in love. They are exquisite. I had always thought that dahlias were going to be too hard. They were too fussy. Laura assures me that they are the easiest things ever and that they produce blooms. The more you cut, the more flowers they produce. She said while we were there, she said, well, I'm going to send you a box of my tubers come springtime. So that's what we're doing. We are preparing the bed for our Laura's dahlias to come visit and stay in North Carolina. We have the tractor and we have the attachment on the back, which is basically it's just a ripper. It's a six foot wide. It has the tines on it and its sole purpose is to break up hard compacted soil, which is exactly what this is right here. <laughs> As we were getting ready, Jerry's like, this is just junk. This is junk soil. It's perfect for placing dahlias in it. Um, so we are going to create not only one bed, not two beds, we're going to go ahead and do three beds. And we're basically going to create kind of a cut flower garden, whatever kind of garden back here with three beds. The process of which how we're going to do it is that Jerry is going to go through with the tractor and first rip up the ground. North Carolina, red clay, extremely compacted back here um, on the left of me, we have beautiful green grass. Over here, we have nothing. Now, this was under a little bit of earth moving, so that is part of the reason, but it's it needs a lot of love and it needs a lot of amendments. So he's gonna go through, um, cut these six foot wide beds, then we're gonna have six feet between each bed so that we can have grass growing between it. Our um, lawn mower is a 54 inch mowing deck that way we can um, get through there and be fine. And then three beds, then he's gonna come back with another attachment and actually mound up the beds. Well, why are we doing this the last day of January, headed into February? This ground needs to go ahead and be um, ripped up, form these beds so that way it can sit for a little bit. And then when planting season comes, we can go ahead and add the amendments and a lot of the hard work is done. So my tip to you is if you are creating brand new beds at your house, now is the perfect time to go ahead and break ground. Of course, we are in North Carolina. Today's like 54 degrees. Um, we're not covered in two feet of snow. If you are covered in two feet of snow, calendar wise, it's going to look a little different for you. So once your ground thaws, the snow goes away, um, that would be a great time to go ahead and break ground, form your beds, get an idea of the size and the dimensions of those beds. So what we're going to do today is so we've got a lot of tractor work. So let's just get this baby going.
We got three beds ripped up and now he's gonna go put on the better, which is a really fun piece of equipment. So off he goes and he'll be back in a minute. Strawberry better, excuse me. I've got to get the exact name perfectly correct. So I'm gonna flip the camera around to give you a perspective of where we are. So you can maybe get kind of the whole big picture. Two, I'm hoping that Jerry will throw up the drone once we're done. Again, I know sometimes when we're doing videos and we get little clips of here and there, it's kind of hard to put the whole big picture together. So I'm trying to help you out here. Okay, so I literally just flipped the camera around. I did not move at all. And then this is where we are. Um, of course, obviously the house, that's the patio, the garden shed. Then coming around here, we did get in the my little quote shrub lot that I'm going to be able to keep my plants here. So that's kind of Jenny's own personal hidden plants back here that I don't have to worry about getting sold at the nursery or put it into a landscape, so forth and so on. Um, and then here we go. Those are the three beds, the cryptomerias with the phantom hydrangeas in front. And then of course, here we have the screen that we installed I don't know, 18 months ago with the tree that we came back in state this late midwinter, mid early fall. And you can see that she is doing quite nicely. So this is the, the tree that Jerry and I staked on that day after I got out of jury duty and she is quite a happy, this is a, these are Berkeys. Um, and so they're doing great. Yep, so just give you a little bit of a perspective. You imagine those phantoms all in bloom. There's the parking lot. Um, the Oakland Hollies are right beside the car here. Um, the beds, Jenny's little shrub lot, back of the house, patio, and Jackson. <laughs> In one of our latest last um, videos that we did, it was the building your essential garden toolbox. And I talked about having something to move products around in, around your garden. And I said for Christmas that I had gotten one, this little garden cart that I have been pining over for years. And a bunch of y'all were asking what it was. It's been in a video, you just hadn't probably noticed it before, but right here, it is the little, well, it's a good size garden cart from Gardener's Supply. I do enjoy this thing because those huge tires on it make it so easy to pull very heavy loads. I think it says it's rated to hold up to 500 pounds. It is great. You can throw leaves in here and debris and huge pots and just move it around with ease. And then this back panel that you see right here, it just slides up and down. So if I have to, do have debris in it, I can take that out and then just dump it or if it's mulch, whatever. But yeah, I do enjoy this garden cart and I cannot wait to use it for years and years to come. Okay, my friends, so with that, with, <laughs> with a little finagling, I saw you down there having a, sh not struggle. Yeah, the, the, the tractor needs a little work. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It's not being used because we've been in bobcat land. Yeah, I mean, and it, it, it took a lot of abuse over the years of it has. things. So. It has. This has been like old faithful Kubota. We've had this Kubota, I mean, it's older than um, two of the kids. Yeah, yeah, it was right after. It'd be probably 2007. Anyway, yeah, so he's an oldie and a goodie. Now, let's explain the, what do you call it, a strawberry? It's a raised bed. It's made, they, they made it made it for strawberries. Because strawberries, all strawberry fields, they're, they're grown on raised beds. Sure, yes. Okay, so explain how this works to us. So this is going to go through on both sides of the bed. It's just going to start kind of pulling the dirt in from the edges. It'll probably take a couple passes. It just depends on... You know how well the dirt comes up but i'm going to want to kind of get it up because i'm just going to let it sit for the rest of winter yes and so the reason that and go before i get into that ripping it just one time is enough yeah mm -hmm. is enough and then the reason that we are going to do raised beds and so when we say raised beds you'll see in a minute it literally is is this beautiful mound yeah. of soil now this um we plant in raised beds for a couple of reasons it warms the soil faster because you get there's more surface area for the sun to hit and it heats up faster so you can get plants 
going a little faster. We're going to have dahlias in here. Drainage. And so we need drainage because the issue for us with dahlias is not going to be a temperature issue. It's going to be a moisture issue. So because we have red clay, red clay holds the water. And in the winter time is the time that we're concerned that they could get too wet and soggy and rot. It's not been the case this year. We've had a pretty, what I would consider a dry winter, but the two before have been very, very wet. So there's that. And um, again, this is not the final bed as far as no, the making it no. because you'll come back through with the tiller. We'll clean it up with the tiller right, clean it right up. before we plant. Right. So this is just the rough, the rough ends yep. of the, the framework of the beds. Yep. Yep. All right. Get Let's get to it. Sunlight's going down. So I want to show you the difference between the root bed, right? It just is like it scratched the soil, the surface of the soil, as opposed to, can you see the difference with the nice raised bed? And again, he's probably going to go over here a couple more times, but it creates a nice channel right through there. Look at that. Okay, my friends, so the flower beds for these dahlias and whatever else may come um, in, into our life this year, they are done. The next step for these three flower beds is probably right before we begin planting, we will go ahead and add some compost to the top of these beds. That way when Jerry brings in the tiller, because he'll smooth it out, um, then that tiller course works in the compost to it but the actually you know the soil doesn't look that bad once it got unearthed it's actually got a nice kind of a deep rich brown red color to it it's definitely not the worst we've ever seen so that's a really good thing um so i do know that dahlias will go in here i don't know how many I don't know the spacing on the dahlias. I don't know how many dahlias Laura's gonna send me. So it's better to have too much space prepared than not enough. So that, then of course I will do sunflowers. We have grown, that, I mean, that's how we first got started as Creekside. We would sell sunflowers as cut flowers at the farmer's market. So of course sunflowers will go in here. I already have, they just came today in fact, some zinnia seeds and some cosmos. So all of those things will go in there. And just, this is just gonna be a fun, low key, just to enjoy it and have some beauty and again because the patio is straight in front of me and so we will be able to sit on the patio in our backyard in our back porch rather and see all these gorgeous flowers now i joke and i um i actually sent laura a text when we got home we hadn't even been home i think like two days and i said you know i think this friendship of ours is going to be um kind of you're gonna be a bad influence on me because i ordered like 10 gazillion pumpkin seeds um when right after i left because when we were at her house that was when she was doing her pumpkin harvest and i got to see all of her gorgeous pumpkins and i was just like oh Again, we grew pumpkins years ago out in the front field of our house, huge, giant ones. So she is just bringing back all sorts of fun memories. And what we're gonna go do now is head up. It's kind of gonna be kind of close to the production area. And we're gonna go ahead and rip up the ground for the pumpkin patch. I mean, which is, you know, like her whole goal is, you know, that's what we all do is we're inspiring each other. It is. And I don't know if, I don't know if you could hear that, what Jerry said. I mean, that's her whole goal. That is our goal is to inspire one another. It's not that we're copying each other or trying to be like somebody. No, it's inspiration, right? I mean, that's the, that's the whole deal of this thing is to share our pictures and our experiences with one another. You teach me things all of the time and you can see things in projects that maybe I don't even see. And I'm like, 
oh man, that's a great idea. I would love to do that. So that is what these channels are about. That's what, why we create this content. I know that's why Laura and Aaron create their content. We want to inspire you and to try new and different things. Just go for it. So let's go rip up some ground for some pumpkins. So here we are up in the big field in front of the production area of the nursery and this is where we are going to do the pumpkin patch. Now you'll notice that Jerry did not have the ripper on to begin with. He just went ahead and started straight with the bed maker. That is because we know that this soil is a lot more loose and not nearly as compacted as what we had behind the house because this area has been farmed recently it has um, it's just it's just not as nearly as compacted and it has more water flow over it therefore just using the bed maker is plenty enough so what we're gonna do is basically just make one big huge area um, we're gonna till everything up not till it you know what I mean open up the earth shall we say with the bed maker we will not try to have grass growing between the pumpkin rows i ordered a lot of seeds we're going to have a lot of pumpkin plants sprawling everywhere and to try to maintain grass between the rows it's just really kind of futile futile so we're not going to worry about it and so he is just going to have some fun and digging up some dirt All right, my friends, so Jerry has got the pumpkin patch all, I say tilled up, it's not tilled, but you know what I'm saying, layman's terms here, right? The soil has been upturned and the yeah. beds have been made. Turned under. Turned yeah. under. And the reason that we're doing, making these beds and doing the soil like this now at the very end of January um, is because like you were, we were just talking about this, is to get all of that debris the weeds the grass dug up and so it can die and decompose right right yeah that's in farmers terms that's the trash that's the trash farmers terms now if you are <laughs> if you're a homeowner and you don't have a Kubota tractor or a ripper or a strawberry bed plant maker um, you know that was us gosh I don't know how many years ago? Like that's when we first started doing it. When our very first year, when we lived in our house, which was 18 years ago, so it would be 18 years ago coming up this spring. Mm -hmm. Jerry did our very own, our very first garden, and that was really kind of the <laughs> gateway garden into what eventually led to Creekside Nursery. And we didn't have all this equipment then, no. and so you, we had my daddy had a walk behind tiller, yeah. and that works great. So a shovel at the least, a walk behind tiller. If you don't have one, maybe a friend has one that you can borrow, you can rent them for a day. The idea is though, to get the trash out of these new garden spaces. Which is your grass and weeds and you're wanting to get it, if you can get it tilled under now, mm -hmm. it'll decompose. That cuts down on um, the cutworm. Yeah, that's it, those grubs. Yep, the grubs. So they'll go away because once all this food source is gone, they're not going to be here any longer. Mm -hmm. So this this section will be safe come late April, May. Right. And so with the pumpkin seeds, we can go ahead and get them planted. We'll direct sow them. So that means we're not going to we don't start pumpkin seeds indoors and bring them out as transplant. We'll just take our seeds and and of course plant them. 
we'll show you that whole process when it becomes time to do that but we can do that in april jerry was saying of course looking at because pumpkins take a long time to grow and you've got a ton of green growth and all the vines so you do have to have room to grow pumpkins mm -hmm. so if you have a small space or you're going to do container gardening Pumpkins are not going to be the crop for you because they trail and they vine. Um, all you have to do is go back and look at Laura's videos and you can see how much green matter they make. And they're a very long crop. So we can look at the days to maturity on the pumpkins and then say, well, I want them ready, you know, end of September, middle of September, and then backtrack to see when to plant the seeds. Yeah, it was inspiring to see them, to want to grow them again. We also, we grow moms that are for sale mm -hmm. in the fall. And we have a lot of customers ask, won't you have pumpkins? I don't really want to, at that time, go and invest in a lot of money on crates of pumpkins from, you know, a grower. I just, I like to have just a little bit of cool, unique pumpkins come fall mm -hmm. for our, ourselves and for the nursery and our local customers. Right. So the, yeah. the plan is with the pumpkins yeah. is, of course, <clears throat> is to, for us to be able to decorate. One, it's just something fun to grow. It's something fun and different that we haven't done in a long time. To do that, we can decorate with them because, my gosh, pumpkins were expensive this year. Yeah. Oh, oh. Man, that killed me. But so now we have lots of pumpkins that we can decorate the house with. We can decorate over at the nursery. If we have a bumper crop, then we'll have them available, you know, at the nursery for our customers. But if we don't, then, you know, we haven't, we just lost a little bit of time and some money in seeds and no big deal. But we, you grew squash in this area mm -hmm. when we were doing vegetable farming and it is really good soil. It did really well, it was a bumper crop. And it's been years since we've been here, so that's a good thing. Yes. Now, we don't plan on putting this on irrigation, do we? Uh, probably so. Oh, never mind. This will be on irrigation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jenny just found that out. Um, and the reason I said that, though, is because it is a distance away, but, I mean, you can... We've had it here before, so... Yeah, you can figure that out, but I just didn't know if we were going to have it on irrigation. Yeah, so we are. So. All right. Absolutely. And see, and another good thing, too, is that we have our beehives. You know, we're the host family uh, for, for some bees, and they're just right over the hill. So you need your bees to come pollinate your pumpkins. So we're just gonna have fun this year yep it's gonna go well all right so we got to dig in the dirt i do i am a country girl at heart i grew up as a farmer's daughter and i do enjoy the smell of diesel and freshly turned soil that is one of the best smells love that so i got to experience that today as always thanks so much for going to the creek side y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video bye friends mm -hmm.